robbing the treasury of heaven, of taking these private money temples and using the proceeds for their own benefit, of absolutely breaching every single sacred rule of money from the very beginning. They are guilty of spiritual embezzlement, the worst crime that anyone could possibly imagine. And it's not up to us to hold them to account. It is up to those people in their system who are supposed to oversee it, who are supposed to visit it, who are supposed to audit them. Now, all the excuses in the world might be used to justify why they haven't done it till now, but now, as we speak tonight on the public record, no more excuses. And those that are the auditors, those that are the visitors, are the Jesuits. So when we write to the Jesuits, as our tools and our systems are complete, it is up to them to decide whether they are going to go forward and audit their system. And if they don't audit their system and they don't hold them to account, then we have, at the end of this year, the day of divine judgment. And they will be judged. The judges will be judged far more harshly than the errant priests. And make no mistake, the people that will be judged most harshly if they do not perform their duty will of course be the Jesuits. Of course it will be the Jesuits. So a lot of information, a lot of subjects. One thing, by the way, when we talk about private money, not only is it the strength of Ucadia, but the private money is also public money. So when, when you, you are struggling to save your home or you need to get ahead, the credit will be there to help you. But the validity of the credit comes from your knowledge of what it is, your intention, your honour, your contribution to the society and your energy in that process. So, again, thank you. A lot of information tonight. But as you can see, I hope, the kingdom of ideas, which is Eucadia, an alternative kingdom to the corrupted world that we live in today, is only getting stronger by the day. So thanks very much, and I'm open to questions. Thank you. All right. Great, Frank. A lot of good information and clearing up some things. And uh, this is uh, uh, probably quite a bit to digest. And we're going to go back to a little bit to the beginning with some of the questions early on um, as you were bringing forth some information. There was a question on the chat. Um, do you believe in the UCC one or the straw man, or do you have the, uh, an opinion on that? I, <clears throat> I believe that the UCC, well, the okay, first off, the, the UCC is a private commercial legal system. That is, they have the right to decline who can use it before you even get to whether you have followed their rules. So it's the same as the DTC. The concept of security is that the DTC accepts that an instrument is regarded as a security and they issue out a QCIP number. If you don't have a QCIP number, it's not a security. So it's a closed market. The UCC is a closed market. So the more study we did on the UCC, the more it became apparent is it doesn't matter if you follow their rules. It doesn't matter because if you follow their rules, they still have the ability to say you're not a valid participant. That's why we moved away. I don't want anyone wasting time on things that neither have a relevance for history, a statement of claim, or, or, or anything meritorious in terms of your matter. I know people are keen where they say, you know, it would be great to see that I've got a lien for 10 minutes. Look, we're about to lien their entire financial system in toto, their whole financial system, 
So please don't get focused on 10 million here, 5 million there. If, if you need help and credit, the system that is being perfected will help you. But don't be stuck on the UCC as because there is potentially some $10 million lien on the, on the back end of it. It's there. There's nothing wrong with it. If you are persistent and still want to go down that road, by all means, but just be conscious of the words I've just said. Okay? All right, that makes sense, Frank. Okay. Um, back to uh, the guardianship uh, transferred. Um, a question from V. Um, are these people or these guardians in the same boat uh, as they put us in? Well, that is an excellent question. So let's start with the role of the Pope, for example. And when the Popes since the 16th century have signed their papal bulls, they sign them servant of servant, servant of the servants of God. So they sign their own instruments as a slave. So one of the things to stop anyone breaking out of the system is that they made everybody a slave, everybody. And, and how they got around it, how the, the leaders of fraudism, the parasites, the mentally insane got around it, is that they said that their own oaths meant nothing when they had done a previous counter oath. So you find this in the Sabbatean movement, you find this in the Zion movement, you find this in a lot of the select literature where there are references to a oath, a promise, an application meaning nothing and having no effect because it was not done uh, between themselves and it was against the original oath which said that all of that is meaningless. So that's how they get around it. They basically say um, because of this counter oath, Yes, they're part of the system. Yes, they go through all the mechanisms of appearing to be another slave. But their counter oath means that all those oaths are rendered useless. And the courts know this, and it's been used against the courts a number of times. Very good. All right, so on the, um, the new document that you covered uh, tonight has the a question from the uh, chat. Has the contents of the EDP also been updated to um, reflect those sections? The EDP has not changed. It has not changed as far as um, uh, the... since we updated it to the national leaders. There is no need to change the EDP process. Um, can I just interrupt for a second? I just noticed someone talking about different currencies. Um, there, are, there are thousands of currencies out there and people coming up with different currencies and, and electronics allow currency to be created. But let me say that from a spiritual perspective, purely electronic currencies are an abomination spiritually. They are an abomination. I'm sorry, people may disagree, but from the history of, of money and what I've been describing, pure electronic currencies, of which the current system is 93% at the moment, 93 to 97%, is an abomination. So if someone comes up and says, I've got a currency and it's called Bitcoin or it's called this or that, I am terribly sorry, it does not conform to what we're dealing with. It's a nice idea, but it doesn't solve the issue. The issue is a currency that takes the spirit and the flesh and combines it together in an honour rather than someone saying, well, why can't I create my own currency? You can go and create your own currency, but all you'll ever be creating is uh, a public medium, not a private. It can't be private spiritual. It's a, it's a medium that you're going to have to go and try and convince other people to believe, and it doesn't have the same anywhere near the same impetus as what we're doing with the Ikeda currencies. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to cover that. Okay, great. Thank you, Frank. Um, 
Uh, I just want to remind the callers that are on the phone line, if you do have a question, just press star 8, and that will put you in the question queue, and we will be able to unmute you to ask your question, and we'll do that in the order that uh, those are punched in. Um, you know, <clears throat> you were talking about the um, uh, money changers and actually the actual corn, the coin process of um, upon the uh, death of, of a special, especially in royalty, was that not the case? Pretty much in royalty or warriors, uh, especially that occurred. There was a question on the chat uh, that was quite interesting, and I thought you might expand a little bit on it based on um, insight and the discovery we made about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, the question was, was Abe Lincoln of European powers? Uh, because the comment there was a... Um, put coins on his eyes and possibly his mouth he died? Or yeah, him. well, there's the there's the uh, three coins again, isn't it? Yes. Um, the evidence is that uh, the name Lincoln was a name changed, that his original birth name was Springer, and that his uh, father was a um, Sabatain-connected um uh, of influence. So there is quite a deal of skullduggery associated with Abe Lincoln. Um, my, my problem with, with discussing Abraham Lincoln is that it, it almost requires its own chat because it, it carries with it the same, well, in fact, more than uh, the history and interweaving and skullduggery associated with the JFK assassination. But uh, Abe Lincoln, um, oh, I should say Abraham Springer is his correct name. Abraham Springer um, was deeply involved in the uh, European powers' preparation to the high water mark of 1871, which which was being planned over a period of, of at least 20 plus years. The same, by the way, uh, as the time period that we see, if you like, from 1911 to 1933, a period of 20 years meticulous planning to get to the Reich Concordant, one of the key uh, pieces of the New World Order. This is the agreement that was signed between uh, Pope Pius as uh, uh, Pacelli, Archbishop, and uh, the Nazis, uh, which has then become still a central part of the United Nations and the world today the Reich Concordant, the concordant that validates Hitler and edifies Hitler, even today, is a central plank of international treaty law today. Very good, very interesting. Um, back to also the uh, money changer conversation in the temple. Um, that was an uh, interesting question and some different answers through the chat, but I thought maybe worthy for your input uh, if you wanted to on um, what are the ties really about uh, when the, they call out or when the doctrine uh, says that you must tithe 10% and what is your input on, on that? Well, I mean, a, t a tithe in a sense is, a, is an ecclesiastical tax and the the tithing came uh, in, in in operation um, it, again like much of the stuff there's a mythology associated with it but effectively it is a property tax that was introduced under feudalism that was then given a religious context to say that it had a Old Testament history there is no evidence no evidence of a 10% figure being valid in the ancient world in fact I would suggest to you that the only figure that was considered valid in the ancient world was 3%. That three number again, three coins, 3%, three, three parts. And that the figure of 10% was an ambitious tax created under feudalism. So tithing really is the uh, tax under feudalism that, that ultimately percolated up to the Roman cult 
through its various vassals by imposing a tax and claiming that it was uh, an ancient form of tithing.